pain, budget, decision, fulfillment, post-sale. And the way these concepts are, are, are explained and the way he teaches them that these things are, are you know, in a spe specific order. You can't go to pain without, you know, establishing and uh, building a bond and establishing rapport. You can't go to upfront contract without building that. You can't go to budget before you deal with the pain. So all of these things are um, based on his training are uh, like some of the most phenomenal techniques that I've ever seen. And once I learned them, and now that I talk to sales prof or professionals, so like if I'm talking to like somebody on, you know, somebody like even like a Verizon call, they're trying to sell me some internet. I can hear now their sales training where before I just didn't have an ear for it. And um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. What we're going to cover tonight is bonding and rapport, setting up uh, an upfront contract and identifying your prospects pains pain because and then we're next week we're going to go do the last four um because again i said this this stuff is like i said this stuff is really heavy um it's really um deep you know training and i'm just going to be like giving you guys some, some broad strokes and some overview i can't even begin to like go deep deep into it because of, i'm still in I'm a, I'm a student of it so um i'm just kind of giving you guys uh, a glimpse into what I've been, I'm learning and what I'm trying to get get well at, and um, here let's get, let's get right into the content. Bonding and rapport, develop equal business stature, and encourage open, honest communication. <clears throat> Obviously, we we all know what bonding and rapport is. Rapport, and um, it's just making your lead comfortable with you. You know, you want to do do things, say things, body language that makes them comfortable. And um, it's not necessarily one way. It's depending on who they are, how they speak, how they move, how they the, the volume of their voice. You're mirroring, mirroring, mirroring that. If they're if they talk low, you don't want to be in there all loud. If they're drinking coffee, you, you want to see if you can get, get a coffee. So you're mirroring, mirroring, mirroring. <laughs> behavior you're doing all these different things to to establish these bonds and um <clears throat> the stuff really works and it's really helpful to uh know things and have actual uh training going into these meetings and it, these meetings usually occur with um this stuff really is really is really important when you're dealing with obviously your families like the 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 the, the, the clients or the leads that's going to offer you service, who, who you're offering service directly to, and also the referral sources. They aren't your, they aren't your client or your lead. That's not a person who you're trying to sell services to, but you're still trying to sell them on you. So um, <clears throat> as we go on, you'll kind of see more of what you know that bonding and rapport is about, and you know some of the strategies and techniques to implement it. And uh, yeah. Setting up an up, up, up front contract. This was very new to me. It was really it was really amazing once I understood it. And what, what Sandler does is he asks his questions and position his the conversation to where as though he gets the, the, the problems out the way. He deals with the problems up front, so there's no misunderstanding, there's no um, there's no surprises. There's no, you know, there's no feeling on either either side that people aren't where they want to be. So, for example, when when you're talking about setting up an upfront contract, you want to ask them, OK, are, are you you know, are, are we both clear that I'm coming over here to sell you home care? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, you would say it like that, but that's setting yeah. up an upfront contract. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say that, that is really good. This is some really good stuff because I know in the home care space, I hear a lot of people like hesitating about asking for a two-week deposit. 
And um, and I asked for a two week deposit up front. And if they hem and haul, then that means it's not a, a good um, a good match for me. And I was interviewing. We interviewed someone um, today, a scheduler for the office. And I asked my um, office uh, director if she um, if she if she asked her whether or not she was OK with the salary. And I said um, she said she didn't. I said, well, typically I would ask that question up front. That would be one of my first questions, because if it's not compatible, we wasted days and hours interviewing, scheduling and going through that whole process. That is the elephant in the room. You don't want to get to the end of the process. And they say, oh, that salary is not um, acceptable. Exactly. And that's an upfront. That's a perfect example of upfront contract. Um, <clears throat> thanks for that. <laughs> and identifying the prospect's pain. And um, I don't know why this was so um, like a light bulb moment for me when I understood this concept, because I mean, it was, it seemed so basic, but it just made so much sense to underline it and to highlight it in the conversation because um, when you learn to, and it's so easy in home care to, to identify a prospect's pain because we know what's going on in that house with that senior and we know how they're struggling, but we want to get them to say it. You know what I'm saying? I want you to tell me all your problems. And then at the end, I'm going to be the solution. And you have to learn. Once you learn how to do that, it's um, it's like you're it's like you're it's like magic sales. It's like you become a magi magician. And the fun part of it is to see it work over and over again. Um, <clears throat> but it's not going to happen overnight. I don't want to get you guys too excited and be too cocky. Like, oh, you're going to watch this video and then you're going to go out here and then you're going to be killing it because it's not the case. You're going to have to study this stuff. You're going to have to practice it. You're going to have to actively listen to other salespeople do it. I would also encourage you to go get some sales training, Sandler specifically. But if you're not excited or, you know, um, feeling like this is for you, get some sales training somewhere.